Hi there. Uh, this shoulder exercise in Pilates would be referred to as a dumb waiter. It's often used as a warm-up component at the beginning of a class, and it's simply performed by having the arms out in front of you, almost like you're holding a tea tray. Elbows are tucked in, neutral position established, feet hip width, um, that lovely Pilates posture in place. Take a breath in, and then as you breathe out, you pivot the hands away from the body. Now, as you perform this movement, the elbows should stay tucked in, not moving uh, away from the body. And that physiological movement of the hands moving out to the side is actually an external rotation of the glenohumeral joint. So as the forearm moves away from the body, the humerus pivots on its axis, and that glenohumeral joint where the head of the humerus articulates with the glenoid fossa of the scapula, that externally rotates. So there are external rotations driving that movement in the shoulders, and it can be one which is uh, quite limited for some people, particularly if they, they've had an injury there. So the dumb waiter itself is um, a very nice exercise to facilitate not only external rotation, but a stretch of the anterior uh, shoulder and chest wall. So it's a great exercise for promoting more range of movement there. Because so often limited range of movement here is combined with musculoskeletal dysfunction of the entire shoulder girdle, particularly the neck as well. A lot of people will stoop the head forwards and the more they, they take those hands out, they lose control. So use your Pilates principles of keeping that uh, elongation through the body and as you move into external rotation, then you can address that neck control as well as if the head has been pulled up from the crown and when you go into there, you just get that lovely feeling of dissociation of movement and activation of your core as well. With uh, these exercises, there are multiple variations, and a very simple way is to use resistance. I would just encourage laying the band over your hands, and then you can grip it between your thumb and index finger to save gripping too tightly with your fingers. You can then perform your external rotation, your dumbwaiter, with the resistance band. And this gives us um, a really nice addition. So often as the case with resistance bands, they are a humble tool, but they can give you lots of, kind of exact precision in what you're doing. If you notice that the band is bouncing or shaking too much, you're probably overcooking it slightly. And it also gives you a nice kind of visual uh, feedback mechanism. You can check that that band is staying level as you perform this exercise. The final thing I would say if you're using this technique is to make sure that your wrists stay in a neutral position. A lot of people will bend the wrists back uh, to, or deviate the wrists to one side to give a false movement if they're a little bit uh, lacking control up top in the shoulder. So as you perform your external rotation, your dumb waiter, we're looking for that pure dissociation of movement. It's just external rotation of that glenohumeral joint to get that great pattern established with the core stability um, in the background. Now, external rotation is a very critical element of shoulder function, but not just statically. When the evidence base is, is looked through, one very important feature in rehabbing uh, shoulder pathologies and injuries is to be able to generate an external rotation force with shoulder flexion. So this is where the, the precursor of the dumb waiter comes in very handy for progressing onwards. I mean, some people would call this movement uh, akin to an offering or some of those um, kind of yoga and Pilates fused exercises where you're coming up and offering things out in front of you. If we were doing this movement and coming up into shoulder flexion, when we've uh, got our hands in that position, it can be very difficult to know which muscles are governing the control of that movement. Also, when you bring your hands up, it's very easy for the elbows to come wider than the hands. So if we take the resistance band again, this is where it becomes uh, very noticeable very quickly. We generate the beginning of our dumbwaiter, hands coming out slightly, we've activated those external rotators, and then we move up into our offering movement or our shoulder flexions, trying as best we can to keep those elbows in and the hands wider. And as you perform that, you're gonna feel very quickly all the muscles which are being targeted in that particular sequence. Now, this is again where you want to use your Pilates awareness of center to stop 
aberrant patterns happening. What normally happens when I see, teach this exercise is that the hips sway forwards to generate extra lift and you get that cheating mechanism coming in. Generate your external rotation force, elbows tucked in, and as you go up, keep that body beautifully still, keep the elbows narrower than the hands, and then it's very unlikely you're going to go much above 90 degrees with your humerus here. So um, don't worry if you're not getting up into a great deal of height. There can be very difficult uh, things in the background to prevent any extra range of movement there. So don't worry about the height, but use that band to keep the tension consistent. And as you're coming up, make sure that the band is level, make sure there's no bounce on it, and that you're keeping those elbows narrower than the hands. Another really nice tool is the Pilates circle, which you can use here. By placing the hands facing each other on the inside of your circle, you can generate that same external rotation force. And we've got a slightly different dynamic here because the forearms are in a, a more supinated position here. Press out, try and draw those elbows in, and you're almost trying to burst out of that circle. And this is one of the ways uh, you find out why the Pilates circle is often referred to as the magic circle. It's got this magic tendency to really get muscles you forgot you knew you had or forgot you had in the back of your shoulder working really well and there's always a limit to how many you're going to be able to do in that situation. So there we've got um, variations on the Pilates done waiter and how you can keep those Pilates principles flowing through this essentially shoulder rehab uh, series of exercises but Really important ones, external rotation and the ability to generate external rotation force as you're going up into shoulder flexion. If you haven't got those in your locker for shoulder rehab, I would seriously consider um, adding them to the list.